This is sort of typical English weather, really. Hey, you know that wind? You know that thing that's going to keep screwing up the audio quality that you, you're trying to test? I'm going to keep that up. I'm just going to... I'm just gonna keep on being a little bit blowy today because for like the third week in a row you try to do a video and uh, nah nah it's just not gonna happen thanks wind thank you Britain thank you weather oh it's a nice area where are we now it's kind of a new area as well that's pretty I like it I like it a lot. So, Wednesday just gone. I passed my test. Yeah, boy. I passed my damn bike lesson. Testy, testy. Yeah, mod 2 test. Yeah, that's the one. Words. I got them today. So looking back on the whole test, lessons, all that sort of stuff, I've done a direct access course, a direct access course, that's the one, and uh, that was a course of like five or six days, you do your CBT, you do your, um, your conversion training, which is getting used to a larger bike, and now jumping from a 125 to a 650 feels like a very big step initially because whereas you're going around roundabouts you know you start first second you might drop it in the third gear on this thing if you go over second you're coming off the roundabout it's as simple as that at least if you're giving it a sufficient amount of revs that is so what you're basically left with is a much more powerful bike and trying to get used to that and then you know you go for your Usual manoeuvres, your U-turns, your clutch controls, your um, stops and starts, all the good stuff, basics. It's like a CBT but on a 650. And then, you know, you go out for a ride. Next day, you do your Mod 1 training. Your Mod 1 is the, uh, for those who don't know, basically a large open car park with a bunch of cones set out. And that is manoeuvres. So, can you sufficiently swerve the bike out of the way of something if it's in, you know, in your way? Can you come to a controlled stop? Can you do an emergency stop? All the, um, all the lovely goodies. I have more issues with the Mod 1 than I did with the Mod 2. The main reason is, when I was doing the swerve control... I'll get out of your way, sir. When I was doing the swerve control... I knocked over one of the cones, but I'm not disheartened by it in the slightest. The examiner at the time said it was almost like the wind took it. And the wind was a little bit breezy that day, don't get me wrong. So when I got back into the office, he says, well, unfortunately, mate, um, you knocked one of the cones over, so it's a fail. I looked at him like, what? Which one? He goes, on your swerve avoidance, when you came back in, you, um, knocked one of the cones over, although... Although it was almost like the wind took it, it literally just went, eh. <clears throat> so, that's a fail. So another lump of money later, I'm back on the Mod 1 again, and the speed trap isn't working. He does have a backup, but he's adamant this one's going to work properly. So does a few things and the only minor I got on the mod one that time again was on the swerve avoidance because it wasn't quite fast enough I was one mile an hour too slow now that is a minor but you've got the option to do it again so of course I did because I don't want to bloody um, fail and then have to do all this crap again so done it again smashed it job done happy boy Mod 2 rolls around, two weeks later, Mod 2 is your, almost like a car test really, you do 10 minutes of uh, free riding, which is uh, following the signs rather than actual instructions, 
So follow the signs to Cambridge, for example. So off you go. Follow the signs to Cambridge. It doesn't matter if you get to Cambridge or if you're on the way to Cambridge, you can go completely the wrong way. The main point is you ride safely. And that was stressed. There's a few YouTubers out there I've seen, you know, there's, there's quite a few people that do like uh, uh, tips and tricks and all that sort of stuff. And it's all good to know. You know. Some of them work, some of them don't. Depends on who you go for. I'm not going to say what does and what doesn't. All I will say is, ride the bike, but ride it safely. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter where you go. You could go any way you want. So long as it's not down a one-way street, the wrong way, or you know, you, you're riding directly into freaking oncoming traffic or so, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Just don't be a dick. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a rule that applies to most things in life. Do not be a dick and you'll be fine. So yeah, Red's got, us, uh, got himself a slight cold. I say cold. I've been trying, desperately trying, to get a video sorted each weekend. Now, one thing I want to do with the channel is release a video at least every week. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, um, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. I'm happy as long as it's at least five minutes long and it has some kind of entertaining factor to it. Me just riding the bike, saying nothing, or the wind interrupting the microphone, so my audio comes through is just it's bollocks and I ain't having it so every time I've gone out I've tried doing a different thing well I've tried doing something different to make sure I know someone lives down there um, <laughs> to make sure the audio is different the wind is affecting the microphone less and less. So... Go out the first weekend, think, right, I'm going to stuff the microphone in a part of my helmet. Lo and behold, the wind still got to it, didn't it? So the audio again, zip, 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 all along. And then... I order myself a uh, fluffy cover or a dead cat. I've been told it's called for the microphone. So it's just like a, a, a furry sock, a fluffy sock, to go over the top of the microphone to prevent wind noise, which worked to an extent. And then all the way. As soon as I got over 30, 40 miles an hour, it was just been there. So I thought, right, I spent a bit of extra money. Get a microphone, a new one doesn't work with the GoPro. I've got to plug it into my phone, record myself on my phone. I just, oh God. At the moment, I've got a microphone at the top of my helmet and I've got one next to my mouth. So I'm basically recording myself twice here. The microphone which I've been having issues with, I've put into the top of my helmet, at the very top, inside all the padding. There's no way any noise should get to it. Wind noise, that is. Um, at the same time, it also greatly reduces the audio quality because it's hiding behind a bunch of padding and then my hair and obviously all the bits and bobs to between. Uh, the second microphone is a microphone which doesn't work with a GoPro. It's plugged directly into my mobile phone and that is right next to my mouth. So if I'm a little bit loud, I apologise and I'll try and keep the noise down. Easier said than done, I suppose. 